Alright guys, so today I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't stim rush in Search and Destroy. And obviously Warzone, I feel like there's no need to stim rush in Warzone at all. But for Search and Destroy, stim rushing is a really bad idea. Usually people do it just to catch the other team off guard. Or if they feel like the other team is not watching a spot, so they can stim rush off that. But overall, it's not a good idea. It's only a risky idea. And if you're trying to play smart or if you're trying to win the game, stim rushing is a really bad idea and you shouldn't do it at all. But the first reason I think stim rushing is bad is because it's very predictable. So if I know that you're an aggressive player who likes to stim rush, especially if you do it every single round, it's really easy to just wait for the opponent to stim rush, hold a spot, and then you can just get an easy kill in the rushing. So let's just say I take a rush route to the right side, right? So I start off the game, I'm running, I stim rush over here, and I pop out my gun. I can get shot from over there, there, and there. My point of stim rushing is to try to catch them off guard and flank them from behind. If I'm the enemy team and I go all the way over here, I can literally just hold this down right here where I can get in this spot and hold it down. This is a very hard counter to a stim rush because the whole purpose of stim rush, like I said, is to assume that they're not going to be here and then try to flank the whole team which is very unrealistic and then if you're doing that round after round if you're stim rushing over here and they're like okay next round I want to stim rush over here this is a horrible spot to stim rush I tried it a few times and I just couldn't do it because every time I rush through here they throw grenades kill me here or if I pop out my gun here there's a guy aiming at me here and then people over there So it's it's really hard. Stim rushing mid game or towards the end of the game is a lot smarter idea, but it's still pretty hard if you don't have dead silence. Another reason I don't stim rush is because it's very loud. So like I said, if I go through here and I use the stim, I'm very loud. So even if they don't know I'm here, if they're all the way over here and they can hear me, they'll they'll just be able to aim. They don't even need a they don't even need to guess that I'm right here. All I need to do is run maybe they want to push through here they hear me coming and then it's an instant kill so you got to be careful with that also if you have dead silence and you pop a stim they can hear it if they're right next to you so it gives away your position while you're using dead silence you also can't pull out your gun while you're stim rushing so if it's like i don't know 2v2 and i want to stim rush let's just say i hear people all the way over there across the map i go over here I pop my stim because I want to rush all the way over there as fast as I can. And if I'm on the middle of the stim and they peek out like right here, I'm instantly dead because I can't switch weapons real fast. Plus, usually when I stim rush, I have my knife out and then I pop my stim because that gives you the best mobility. It helps you run really fast. And if you're using a stim and you see somebody, you have to stop the stim, pull out your knife, and then pull out your gun again. So it takes too many steps and you're going to get shot at really easily. Be very careful with that. And then the final reason why I don't use stims, I don't stim rush as much as I used to, is because the more you use the stims, the more you won't have it for the later game. So stim rushing with dead silence can be really good if it's like a 2v2 one-on-one -on -one situation, or even like a 1v6. I usually get a lot of kills off stim rushing right there. But in the beginning of the game, it's bad. So if you have, if you use all your stims, if you stim rush in the beginning, you're not going to be able to have stims towards the end of the game. And also, let's just say you get shot. If I peek here, there's too many people. I run around and get shot. I could stim and then re-peek them. And then they won't know that I'm going to kill them because they'll think I'm running, so they're going to chase me. And then I can catch them off guard. But if I don't have stims, I'm forced to keep running in this position, which I can then run into more people over here. Or I can try to play it off angle, and then they can still kill me because I'm one shot. So you got to be very careful with that. But some alternatives I do run instead of stim is I, I don't really run flashes because I, I feel like they don't have a, a huge effect. But stuns are really good for like knowing where people are. So let's just say there's a guy right there, but I don't know he's right there. He could be hiding in that corner. I can throw a stun. If I don't get anybody, I'm like, okay, nobody's in that corner. And I just made some noise over there so I can fall back over here. And then flank the person. So stuns, I know stuns, people just throw them and then they slow the person down and then they can immediately push because it's an unfair advantage. 
But stuns are really good for knowing where people are at and figuring out where the enemy is, and then you can plan where you want to take them out. Another thing that I use is smoke. Smoke is also really good for throwing off the enemy. So there's multiple ways to get killed by, right? If I'm standing right here, I can get shot from there to there or over here. So if I throw smoke in the middle, I cut off the middle area and then they can't see me at all. So I'm focused on this spot and that spot. So now I can play my back towards here. There's smoke there so we can't see through there. And then I can focus on here. If no one's here, I can focus back. So smokes are really good for blocking off enemy vision. And then snapshots are a really good alternative too. Because snapshots grenades, if you assume that somebody's in that area, you throw a snapshot and then it uses the heat vision to detect people through walls. So those are really good for figuring out what people are. Really good alternative to stims. But the way I use stims, I usually use them if we're winning by a lot. So I'll stim rush if it's like 4-0. to zero. I will not stim rush if we're losing by a lot. Or like I said, if it's a 1v6, I can pull up my gun, kill somebody here, kill somebody there. And then the whole team knows I'm right here. So I can go pop dead silence, use the little bit of tax burn I have, and then I can use stim to get it right back. You can get killed while you have your knife out and while you have your stim out. So for some reason, if there's anybody on this side, if I'm just running trying to flank the whole team, I'm going to get killed very easily. And it's, it's, it's really going to suck, but the stims are a real risky move. So please save your stims. It's really annoying when I have teammates who stim rush every single round. I understand if you want to take that risk and stim rush sometimes and then try to get the flank. But if you're stim rushing every single round, especially the same route and you keep dying, it's a huge sign that you need to change up what you're doing and you need to stop using stims to rush the enemy. Because most of the times rushing doesn't work unless you know exactly what you're doing. And stim rushing is a horrible plan, and it doesn't work most of the time. It's only a lucky thing. And you see it a lot in montages, too. You see it a lot in montages because when people post, like, YouTube videos, they're posting their best clips. They're not posting every single game that they're doing good. They're posting, oh, I just got a good stim rush kill one out of ten times. I'm going to post that one and not post the other nine. Because why would they post the other nine when they did bad? So, I hope... You guys can use stims more effectively, and it's really not good when you're trying to play competitively. Thank you. 